Praise the Lord. This is your host, Elder Gregory Newsom with the Faith in God Internet TV. God bless you on this wonderful Monday. We bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of our life, and we honor leadership on today. We want to honor our honorable pastor, Bishop Dr. Ellis Murchison, Sr. of the Pentecostal Power Church, and to Lady Paulette, and to my own lovely wife, Missionary Newsom. We thank and praise God for what God is yet doing for uh, the both of us and you all as well. We have uh, a lot to report today. We had a beautiful uh, youth conference on this particular weekend and uh, the Lord came in. All of our uh, delegates and all the speakers uh, did an excellent job uh, uh, from uh, Elder Lee down to uh, Pastor McGee and all of the other speakers that spoke on the midday service. What a powerful service the midday service was as well. It was just a treat. And I just uh, took the time to take it all in and process it and uh, let the word reflect in us uh, as we asked the Lord to uh, put us back on the wheel and uh, take out what needs to be taken out and put in what needs to be put in because we cannot uh, we cannot uh, tell the potter what to do, but we can uh, put ourselves in a humble state, in a humble position uh, that we'll stay right there and let the master do his handiwork with the clay. And that's what we were uh, there doing this weekend, letting the Lord just do what he do and uh, fill us with his Holy Spirit, because that's what we need. That's what we're fighting now. Uh, we in the last days, we're fighting fleshly minds and fleshly bodies. And uh, I want to say this, uh, people may not know it, but um, just like the Lord need a vessel to use you, uh, the devil also need a vessel. And so we want to make sure we yield our vessels as servants unto righteousness. Amen. Praise God. But we wanted to uh, thank God for um, <clears throat> having such a uh, beautiful youth convention. Um, Minister Calvin did an excellent job, our youth president, and all of those that are working with him in his cabinet did an excellent job with, uh, you know, working with the youth, and the youth seem to be encouraged, and we pray that that will continue. But however, we want to uh, start out getting uh, various prayer requests. Please pray for our Pastor and First Lady Bishop and Lady Paulette, please pray for uh, the Newsom family, Missionary Newsom and myself and all of our grandchildren. Pray for our immediate family, uh, especially our unsaved uh, loved ones and a portion of our family that's not saved. Let us continue to pray one for another. And let us continue to pray uh, for unity among the body of believers and continue to pray for those that are sick in the hospital, especially those behind prison walls. And we're praying that the uh, Lord will just uh, heal in some uh, very uh, sensitive areas in the body of Christ that we would all grow into uh, a holy habitation of God in the spirit. And um, continue to pray for all of those that are shut in, uh, especially those that are in the uh, uh, dire need. I'll put it like that, in the dire needs of prayer. Pray for our pastor, uh, Pastor Reese. Uh, uh, Joseph Reese, uh, we ask the saints to touch and agree with us as we pray for him and his family, um, that the Lord will touch and heal and strengthen uh, his body. Amen. Praise God. And that God will touch all of those that's in need of healing. All right. Uh, let us continue to pray for our presider, our assistant presider, um, Bishop uh, Charles Bennett, and also uh, Bishop Charles Webb. Let us continue to pray for them, that the Lord will strengthen them and their families and the wife and their wives. And also uh, that he will continue to just give them what they need to lead uh, the organization. All right. Continue to pray for our senior bishop, uh, Bishop Floyd Scott and uh, the Scott family. Continue to pray for Brother Andrew Lee, uh, his family. Uh, Sister Doris, pray for Bishop Mark Jones and Mother Mark Jones and all of the bishops and pastors, bishop elects, let us pray for them, that the Lord continue to uh, bless them and uh, grant them uh, with uh, 
everything that they need to be successful in uh, helping the body of Christ. I want you all to pray for me. My prayer is that the Lord will grant me with more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of his word, that we might be a benefit to the body of Christ. Uh, after all, we are the least of the brethren, so we want uh, God to have preeminence. And so we want to yield our vessels so much so that uh, we would be able to uh, be used anywhere, anytime by the Lord. And uh, we want to be so uh, in tune with the Lord and sensitive to the spirit that anywhere he leads, we will follow. And that uh, my family and I would uh, continue to, you know, tune in, <clears throat> tune in to the voice of God that we may hear his every beck and call. That's what we want to do. We don't want to just be in church, doing church. And uh, as someone said during the convention, we don't want to be a Ichabod, where the Spirit of the Lord has left us. So we want to be uh, sensitive to the Holy Ghost enough that God will be able to get the glory out of our lives. So please pray for Brother Newsom as we uh, remain uh, steadfast in our resolve to uh, share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right. And so as we get ready to go before the Lord in prayer, let us touch and agree right now. We're going to go to Second Chronicles 7, 14 through 16. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend to the prayer that is made in this place. For now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. Let us go before his throne. Precious Father in heaven, in Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace to give thanks and praise unto you. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for, oh God, everything that you are to us. Oh God, you are all in all. We thank you right now. Oh God, just for your Holy Spirit, we thank you, God, for all that you're doing and yet, oh God, getting ready to do in the lives of those that will hear your voice. And Father, we pray today for those, oh God, that said pray for us, God, and we're here to intercede, God. We're here to stand in the gap, Lord. Oh God, as a vessel, God, of, oh God, clay that brings honor and glory to you. God, help us now, God, as we petition you, God. You told us, oh God, oh God, that we can ask and it shall be given. We can seek and we shall find. We knock and the door shall be open. Lord, open up the doors, oh God. Oh God, of your heavenly kingdom to those that seek to get in. Those that seek to, oh God, be baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Those that are sick among us that need healing. Oh God, you, we know by your stripes we're healed. And we thank you for it right now, God. And we speak life, God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. We know the enemy attacks in many facets, God. And, oh, God, when people are, oh, God, sick in their bodies, oh, God, when they have ailments, oh, God, oh, God, hallelujah, glory to God, the enemy attacks the mind. And, Father, we pray now that they will have peace in their mind to know, oh, God, that you will keep them in perfect peace when their mind is stayed on thee, oh, God. And, Lord, send healing their way in the name of Jesus. We pray, God, you would touch every infirmity, God. And, Lord, heal them, oh, God of their disease in the name of Jesus. We speak to it now, God. We know what the doctors have said, but Lord, we believe the report of the Lord. Glory, thank you, Lord. And Father, we speak healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. We speak encouragement, God, and those that are oppressed and depressed. Oh God, we speak, oh God, hallelujah. Oh God, we speak, oh God, freedom and uplifting right now. For who the Son has set free is free indeed. Loose them, God. Oh, God of every pain, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, strengthen them, God. Oh, God, to stay with you, God, no matter what they go through. And, Father, we pray for that mind, God. Those that have in mind battles, those that's considering suicide, and those, God, that are fighting, oh, God, depression. 
in the name of Jesus. Those, oh God, that have lost their identity, God, restore today. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Glory. Restore them, God. Oh, God, back to you. In the name of Jesus, touch that backslider, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And oh, God, grant them deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now. And Father, we decree and declare it done in the matchless name of Jesus. Touch God. Touch Lord. Hallelujah. Encourage right now. And oh, God, bless them now. Strengthen their family, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. And Father, we declare it done in the name of Jesus. And it is so in Jesus' name to the glory of God. Thank God. Amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Uh, we thank and praise God for uh, the prayer because we know uh, the scripture is right. The prayer of faith shall save the sick. And the Bible said, uh, if they committed any sins, it shall be forgiven them. Hmm? And it says also, they shall recover. And so those of you all know who it was uh, that is in recovery mode, but we speak life and we say recover in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Hmm? It ain't over till God says it's over. And so we must continue in our resolve to serve the true and living God. All right. All right. So we're going to get into here. Uh, we want to talk about uh, our subtopic today or, or our heading of our topic today. Uh, the law of the spirit. We want to talk about better promises. And we're going to talk about the law of the spirit. All right. So as we get in here and talk today, we're going to talk about better promises. Uh, and the law of the spirit. So we're going to talk about some things as we talk about the better promises. We're probably going to be a little brief today, but we want to encourage the people of God. First thing, uh, we want to look at some resources that I was researching here and uh, studying, and I'm still meditating on some of these things uh, that we uh, discovered through the scripture. Uh, let's... Uh, well, let's go to uh, Romans chapter 8. I'll start there. We're going to be all over Romans chapter 8, but I'd like to go there um, uh, for a moment. Okay, let's go to Romans uh, 8, and I think I want about 34, 8 and 34. If you all go there with me, Romans 8 and 34, we want to go there and... Uh, Talk about a few things starting there. We're going to go back up in Romans 8, but we want to start here at the latter part of chapter 8 of uh, uh, Romans 8. And uh, yeah, 8 and 34. I think that's what we want. 8 and 34. He says, Who is he? that condemn it. Hmm? Uh, Paul starts out here and uh, he wanted to encourage the uh, Roman church so much so uh, to inform them that uh, the love of God when it's uh, planted right, uh, when we've been born again of the incorruptible seed and we have uh our heart set on God and we love God according to the first commandment with promise. We become inseparable. Hmm? Uh, we become one with God. Praise God. Hmm? And uh, we're going to talk about it. Uh, and uh, we become so much inseparable that uh, the enemy uh, cannot use various things to uproot the believer. Hmm? And many, many uh, believers have started out, uh, you know, with the better promises, uh, not only to fully understand hmm, and really uh, go into depths of these better promises, 
don't only uh, uh, help the believer uh, in the church today, but it also helps the believer even after, all oh, glory be to God, they leave this life that they're in, praise God. Hmm? Because if we don't get raptured out of here, some of us going to go by the way of the grave. And so even with that, the grave don't, don't mess with our promise. Oh, glory be to God. The grave, neither do sickness, neither do oh, tribulation, do none of these things that, that should move us. Oh, glory be to God. Huh? I know the doctor, he comes with these big words and say, oh, you got cancer. Okay. But we, and I'm not making light of these things. These things affect the believer, but we must, uh, after we go through our, our, our moment of despair and, 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 and tears, our resolve must be toward the word of God. Hmm? Our faith must remain intact. Praise God. Hmm? Because there's better promises for the people of God. Hmm? And one scripture lets us know there is a rest for the people of God. And so, uh, we are our rest. We should rest in God. Hmm? We should rest in the hope. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, that's within us. Oh, glory be to God. Because hope make it not a shame because the love of God is shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And so I, I wanted to share and encourage the people of God because sometimes we go through things. Let's talk about it. You know, uh, uh, my bishop was talking about some things and I was thinking about it. We go through things and we would dare not tell you Things don't bother us. Things don't rattle us. Things don't affect us. We don't cry. Hmm? That's the biggest uh, 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 understatement or misunderstood statement that's been told is men don't cry. Men do cry. Praise God. All oh, glory be to God. Hmm? But after, after I've shed my tears, after I didn't cry, I must look back at God's word and know there's hope. All oh, glory be to God. I, I hope I'm encouraging somebody today. There is hope for you. All oh, glory be to God, regardless of what the enemy throws on the table. Hmm? And I'm not saying uh, you're not going to feel down sometimes. I'm not going to tell you, you know, you're going to be on. You're going to be unhappy at sometimes. But I want to let you know it should never disturb your peace. All oh, glory be to God. Hmm? I want to let you know it should never disturb the believer's peace because great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend thee. All oh, glory be to God. We got to make sure we are rooted and grounded in the love of God. And look what Paul says in uh, 8 and 34. Who is he that condemned? It? it is Christ that died. We're going to talk about the better promise. Christ offered a better promise than what the law could offer. Look at this. And he says, yea, rather that uh, is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also make an intercession for us. We have to remember, Jesus said, it's needful that I go away. And uh, John, I'm going to get it here. He says, needful that I go away, because if I don't go, the comforter won't come. Now, I want to I want to get this in John 14. You know, he, he let us know that it was needful that he go away. Hmm? And if he didn't go, the comforter was not going to come. Hmm? I want to get it for you here. And he says here uh, in John 14 and 1, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me and my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know the way. Hmm? Now, he says here, Thomas didn't act like he knew where Jesus was talking about, which he probably was in the dark on it. But Jesus brings it to him. Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest. Hmm? Can we know the way? And Jesus says here, I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
and no man. Uh, it says, uh, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father also. And he says, henceforth, ye are known of him and have seen him. Hmm? So Jesus lets them know that it's needful that I go. All right? Uh, he says here uh, in uh, 1426, we're going to jump over here. Well, let's go to 25, uh, St. John 14, 25. He said, these things I've spoken unto you, being yet present with you. He's telling the apostles this, all right? And he says here, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the better promise. Oh, glory be to God. He gives a better promise here. I'm going to jump right on into it with both feet. He says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Hmm? And you ask people today, do they have the Holy Ghost? Hmm? And they'll tell you, yeah, they got the Holy Ghost. Oh, glory be to God. But when trouble come, they're not comforted. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? But he says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. This better promise teaches us, oh, glory be to God, all of the things that pertain unto life and godliness. Look at this. And he says, it shall teach you all things and bring all things to your members whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, I said it don't disturb your peace. Let's look at this scripture, uh, St. John 14, 27. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Our biggest problem is fear. All oh, glory be to God. And when we get this better promise, we can, we can uh, put fear to bed. We can put fear to rest. All oh, glory be to God. Hmm? For Timothy 1 and 7 said, for God has not given us, glory, the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. We must continue to focus on, all oh, glory be to God, our great God and Savior, which is Jesus Christ. No matter what you're in now, no matter what you go through, hmm? hang on in there. Look at this. He says in St. John 14 and 15, if you love me, you keep my commandments and I will pray to Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. This is what I'm talking about, the better promise. Whom the world cannot receive. All oh, glory be to God. Because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. This is by faith, y'all. Hmm? And you wonder why people can't see the baptism in Jesus' name? No man can all oh, glory be to God. Hmm? No man can get and understand these things except God reveal it unto them. Oh, glory be to God. I want to let you know, God has to open up your understanding for you to be able to see, oh, glory be to God, the glorious light of the gospel. And he says, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. The better promise, oh, glory be to God, hmm? was kept, oh, glory be to God, by Jesus Christ. The better promise. Look at this. And there's a law. The better promise. He was talking about the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of God. Hmm? Let's talk about it. The law of the spirit of life has set you free. Let's go to Romans 8. We're going back. I told you we're going to go back to Romans 8 and we're going to jump up here. But I want to show you something here. In Romans 8 and uh, 35, he said, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or uh, distress or persecution, famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake ye are killed all the day long and we're counted as sheep for the slaughter. Hmm? Don't count your life dear unto yourself. Hmm? Hmm? 
The Bible says if you lose your life for Christ's sake, you'll gain it. You'll get it again. Hmm? Look at this. He said you counted sleep for the you just counted as sheep for the slaughter. I'm so, I'm sorry. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. And he says, nay, in all these things, all glory be to God. Even on your worst day, all glory be to God. I, I'm encouraging somebody today. On your worst day, you more than a conqueror. Hmm? All glory be to God through him that loved us. Huh? And I want to know with the better promise, are you persuaded like Paul was persuaded? Hmm? I'm fully persuaded that neither death nor life, hmm? all glory be to God. We don't want to get stuck with the pride of life. All glory be to God. Hmm? And you know what the pride of life is? All glory be to God. Some people, they stuck with the pride of life. Hmm? They want to live. All glory be to God. They life without giving it to God. Hmm? That's a proud look. All glory be to God. Hmm? Everything we have, we ought to give God the glory. And in Thessalonians uh, 5 and 18, he says, In all things give thanks, glory, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Huh? It didn't say in all things. All oh, glory be to God. Huh? Hmm? Well, for all things, rather. But in all things give thanks, rather. Hmm? So we must look at it. We got to give thanks to God hmm? who has blessed us, who has helped us hmm? through trials and tests. You know, we don't thank for everything. Hmm? We don't thank God for the accident, but in it, God spared me. Huh? So whatever you are in right now, that's why I want to go back and uh, encourage and, and, and uh, I make sure I had the scripture correct. It says, in everything, give thanks. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Hmm? We don't thank God for, all oh, glory be to God, the mishap. Hmm? But in it, God kept me. All oh, glory be to God. Hmm? And I, all oh, glory be to God, I had an opportunity to repent. Huh? It says Paul was teaching the people, don't thank God hmm, uh, for everything. Huh? He was teaching them. Don't thank God for everything that happens to us, but in everything. Evil does not come from God. I wanted to make sure I made that plain to you. Huh? Evil does not come from God. Hmm? Now, God created evil. You can go in Isaiah and see it. Isaiah 44, 45, uh, and 46, there you'll see he created evil and good. But God does not, all oh, glory be to God, hmm? come from evil. Hmm? I mean, evil does not come from God, rather. I got to look, look at this closely. Evil doesn't come from God in the sense that we should not thank him. Hmm? We should be thankful for all that God does for us. And when evil, all oh, glory be to God, comes up on your doorstep, you got to understand God has a better promise. Hmm? And we should not uh, uh, be in a situation huh, where we depart from God because bad things have happened. Hmm? People go back into their sins like a dog back to his vomit. Hmm? to leave the better promises to pick up all oh, glory be to God. Hmm? Something that God didn't even proclaim over their life. Hmm? I'd rather suffer with the people of God than, than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. I won't let you know. God presence. We ought to thank him for his presence. David did. And for the good that he does. Oh, and the good all oh, glory be to God. Hmm? Uh, he will accomplish in our lives in a time of distress. Hmm? We're, we're in a stressful time, people of God. Hmm? We're in a time now where we need to 
be encouraged and understand that the better promises are being kept by the power of God through faith. Hmm? And you must earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints because if we don't earnestly contend for it, hmm, there's some things that are going to creep into your mind if you don't keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Hmm? And this is how people fall from their steadfastness because they lose their focus and they forget about what God has promised them. Hmm? And they go looking at uh, what they can have right now. Hmm? Only know that thing is temporal. Hmm? And I want to let you know trouble don't last always, my friend. He says uh, in Romans here, uh, I was there in Romans 8. I want to go back there and uh, read something for you in Romans 8 here. Uh, just stay with me. We're going to get through here. In Romans 8, he says here, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principality, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It takes something hmm, for a believer to face hardship. Hmm? It takes some depths to face hardships, and they come in many forms. Paul had illness. He had imprisonment. Hmm? He even faced death. And I want to encourage you, uh, these, are, these are all intense forms huh, of suffering. Hmm? He didn't let it cause him to fear. Hmm? People abandoned him. Hmm? People have abandoned us. Hmm? And if you, all oh, glory be to God. My bishop encouraged me already now. Let me know. Hey, if folk left Jesus, they'll leave you. <laughs> oh, let me get at it. I got to go. Hmm? Don't you get stuck on no number of uh, of no crowd. If you just starting to work, you better be encouraged and know just like they came in the door, they'll leave out the door, praise God. Hmm? And so I want to let you know, stay with God. Though the road may get rough, the road may be tough, but people of God, there's a better promise. Glory! And it's in Christ. It's in the Spirit. Glory! We're going to talk about the Spirit in a minute. We're going to talk about the law of the Spirit. We gonna, we want to first encourage you about the better promises, and we're going to go to Hebrews, and we're going to talk about the better promises. We got a ways to go. We got the rest of this month to finish this out. But I want to stay with the thought I had here with the better promise. Uh, Paul was letting them know that it is impossible to be separated from Christ. Uh, and his death was proof. Uh, his death was proof of the unconquerable love. This is why you must have the agape love hmm? and not the love of filio, which is of a friend. Huh? Hmm? The, the love of passion, which is eros. Hmm? but we must have the agape love, praise God, the love that goes farther hmm, than emotion and feeling and attachment. Look at this. Nothing can stop uh, God's constant presence with us. Let me show you scripture. I want to show you scripture here. Nothing stops God's presence from being with us. Sometimes well, I know we act as uh, God is not there when we go on through the fire. Sometimes it feel like he's not there. I'm going to be honest with you. There are times I didn't feel like God was there. Job went through it. Hmm? Sometimes we feel like, Lord, where are you? And all this I'm going through. But let's take a look. I want to give you some better promises here to look at. 
Let's go to Matthew 28. And uh, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them and said, all power. This is what he said. He said, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Hmm? And he encourages them and tells them, gives them a commission and says, go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, which means his name, which they understood it and interpreted as his name. Hmm? Because there's no salvation in no other name. Hmm? But you have to have revelation of the scripture. Jesus gave them authority over heaven and earth huh? on the basis, all oh, glory be to God, of that authority. Hmm? He told them to baptize. Hmm? As they preached, he told them to baptize. <laughs> oh, let me get out of here. And they did it. And they did it with the same authority in Jesus' name. Hmm? And told them to make other disciples. But let's take a look. He says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And then after they do what they were commanded to do, this is the inseparable love. He says, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Look at this. That's inseparable love. God is going to be there always. All glory be to God. Heaven and earth going to pass away, but his word going to abide forever. Hmm? And so if we carry the word of God appropriately, hmm, the word will never depart from us. Oh, glory be to God. I, I know. David said, thy word have I hid in mine heart hmm, that I might not sin against ye. The word will never leave you. We leave it. Oh, glory be to God. But once it gets in there, it will never leave us. I've seen people that's had backslid on God, but that word was still in them. Oh, I got to go. I know that's powerful. That's a powerful revelation I wanted to break down to you today. I've seen people that have left God, but that word was still in them. All oh, glory be to God. And I want to encourage somebody today. God said he will never leave you. All oh, glory be to God. And no matter what you in or what you going through right now, there's a better promise. All oh, glory be to God in Christ Jesus. Let's let's go to the uh, uh, scripture here. Uh, we're going to go uh, up in Romans 8, and then we're going to skip around here. We're going to go to uh, Romans 8 and uh, 1. Now we're going to talk about, we're going to get into the law of the spirit. We're still going to talk about better promises when we get to Hebrews, but we want to, since we're here in Romans 8, we figured it'd be easier not to turn more pages and stay right here and work with this uh, topic today, the law of the spirit. And we're going to talk about better promises. All right. The law of the spirit. And we're going to talk about better promises. The better promises came through the law of the spirit. All right. Since you want to understand the topic today, the better promises was delivered to us by Jesus Christ through the law of the spirit. Okay. Do we have that concept? All right. Now we have that concept. Let us go with it. He says here in Romans eight, and I got to get out of here too. Oh yeah. I got about 15 minutes. I may not get all of this today, but we'll pick it back up on Wednesday if the Lord's will. He says here in Romans 8 and 1, he says, therefore now, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Hmm? Condemnation is, is only uh, uh, manifested when we sin. All oh, glory be to God. Our conscience condemns us. Anybody that know right from wrong, all oh, glory be to God, it resonates with them that they've done something wrong. Hmm? We're talking about somebody that's in their right mind. Hmm? We're not talking about somebody that don't have a mind because there must first be a willing mind huh, to serve the Lord. Without a mind, Paul said, I myself with the mind, I serve the law of Christ, but with the flesh, the law of sin. 
So there must be a mind. That person, in order for you to be saved, you must have a, a right mind. Oh, I, I know. I know I'm going a little bit too much uh, in depth with this, but uh, there must be a mind. If there's no mind, the person loses their mind. Uh, th th there's nothing to register or resonate with that individual until that person gets their mind. Hmm? This is why the man that was had all the demons and was cutting himself and doing all these different things, he didn't, he, he was he wasn't in his mind. But when he came across Jesus and Jesus cast out all those demons and uh delivered him, the Bible says. He was sitting there clothed and in his right mind. Oh, glory be to God. I'm trying to break it down for you. But here it is. He says here uh, in Romans 8, therefore now, uh, there is therefore now, Romans 8 and 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Hmm? Now, we stop right there. But I want to continue to read because the Bible says, uh, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. People don't want to say this to the church and to people that's in church, but you got a lot of flesh minded folks in the church and they are condemned. Oh, let me get out. I got to go. You got you got all kinds of things in the church. And it says. There is no, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh. That person that's walking in the spirit is not condemned. Oh, glory be to God. But that person that's in the church walking in their flesh, oh, glory be to God. There is condemnation. Huh? And we must look at this and understand that if you're walking after the flesh, doesn't matter how long you've been in church. Don't matter how long you've been saved. Don't matter what kind of tongue you just spoke in. Hmm? If you're in the church, walking after the flesh, after you've been baptized, after you repented and been baptized in water in Jesus' name, and you're walking after the flesh and not after the spirit, huh? you're condemned hmm? by the law of the spirit. Oh, glory be to God. I know I'm going deep. I know I'm going deep today. But you're condemned by the law of the Spirit because you're one of those disobedient people that has the Holy Ghost and not allowing it to lead and guide you. And after a while, you keep going, it's going to leave. Or, oh, glory be to God, you're going to slide back into your old sins. All right? I want to make sure I break it down to you. Look at this. And he says here, for the law of the spirit. Uh, he says, for the, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ was only, was the only one able to bring life back into a dead man. Oh, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm messing up bad. The first Adam died. Oh, glory be to God. And could not regain life until Christ came. Oh, let me get out of here. Glory. Thank you, Lord. I'm going deep now. We're going fishing deep. We're going deep in the water now. You could not get back to God without Christ. Hmm? You was just dead men walking until Jesus came on the scene. Praise God. Hmm? Oh, well, I'm talking about the better promise. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, huh? it never could, glory, make the commas there too perfect. You can see I'm getting wound up now. Hmm? I want to explain something to you. Let me, let me, uh, let me uh, go a little bit farther here. He says here, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. No Christ, no life. Hmm? This is why we must let people know Jesus is the savior of the world. Huh? Without Jesus, there is no salvation. Oh, glory be to God. Huh? Without Jesus atoning and all oh, glory be to God, offering himself as a sacrifice. Oh, glory. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? We got to understand. There's a better promise. Hmm? And it's true the law of the spirit of life. 
that is in Christ Jesus. There's no liberation without Jesus. Hmm? The people were, oh, uh, oh, glory be to God. When Jesus hung on that cross from the sixth to the ninth hour, hmm? the Bible says when he gave up the ghost, the ground opened up. Hmm? And people that was dead got up. Oh, glory. Let me get out of here. I got to get out of here. Huh? He freed them. I got to get it. Huh? Glory to God. I won't let you know he got up. Oh, glory be to God. People that was shackling, oh, bound up. When Jesus went in, when, when Jesus gave up the ghost, they got up. Praise God. Hmm? What is that telling us? That was life through the law of the spirit. He hadn't even sent the Holy Ghost back yet. Hmm? But just through his death, released all and broke all glory be to God. Everything that the devil, all glory be to God, had set up to bind humanity. Hmm? The death of Christ loosed us hmm? and gave us a better promise. Glory to God. Hmm? Oh, we broke, oh, we broke many promises to God. Hmm? but God gave us something that will keep us from breaking covenant with him. Praise God. Now let's take a look. I got to get out of here. I got about 10 minutes now. He says here, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. It had made him free. Hmm? He was present <clears throat> at creation. Hmm? And we must understand every person that's born again, hmm? God gives them power hmm? to become the sons of God. Look at this. Gives them power to become the sons of God. Hmm? He gives them power. We, meet, we need, excuse me, he gives them power that they need and that we need to live this Christian life. You see Acts 1 and 8, he said, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come. Hmm? No Christ, no Holy Ghost. You see the connection? Hmm? Let's take a look. We must understand the Holy Spirit uh, at work in our lives. Hmm? There's things that we wouldn't ordinarily do. All oh, glory be to God before we receive the Holy Ghost. Hmm? Look at this. Jesus gave himself as a sacrifice for our sins. Uh, uh, animal sacrifice was continually offered at the temple. Huh? And we must understand Jesus was needed because our sin situation was serious. Hmm? We were in big trouble. Look at this. And the blood had to be shed so our sins could be pardoned. All oh, glory be to God. Hmm? The old covenant, all oh, glory be to God, had to be reestablished through the blood of Jesus to bring in the new covenant, the new testament. Praise God. Huh? And it cannot be a tester. Uh, uh huh? Unless the tester dies. Hmm? Can't be a testament until the tester dies. All oh, glory be to God. Look at this. And the animal blood could not remove sin. All oh, glory be to God. I'm talking about the better promise. The animal blood could not move sin. Let's, uh, we're going to go, we, since we got to go, I got to go to Hebrews now. I, I may have time to talk on a little bit. The animal blood could not remove sin. I wanted to go to Matthew 1 and uh, 21 and say, and the virgin shall be with child and she shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. The law could not get the job done. Hmm? The animal sacrifice could not get the job done. All right. We're going to go to Romans, uh, not Romans, we're at Hebrews chapter 8. We were in Romans chapter 8, now we're going to Hebrews chapter 8. 
Now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. Uh, we have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of majesty in heaven, a minister of sanctuary hmm? and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Hmm? Look at this. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Uh, wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that uh, there are priests that offer gifts according to the law, who serve unto the example of the shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he were about to make the tabernacle. For see, he said, thou make all things according to the pattern I show it thee in the mount. But now, look at this now. Let's take a look here. We in uh, Hebrews 8 and 6. But now he had obtained a more excellent ministry uh, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant. Oh, glory be to God. Do y'all see these better promises? It was a better covenant. Jesus had a better covenant than what was given. Oh, glory be to God by Moses. Look at this. Look at this, which was established upon better promises. All oh, glory be to God. Y'all see it? <laughs> All glory to God. We have the better promise, praise God. Hmm? I'm going to read Hebrews 8 and 6 again for you. And I got to let you go. We're going to pick this back up on Wednesday. You can see I'm having a good time. He says, but now had obtained a more excellent ministry how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was also established upon better promises. For if the first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. All oh, glory be to God. Now, I want to read on in your study time. These are the faithful words of Ellen Newsom. In your study time, Continue with me. We're going to pick back up Hebrews chapter 8. We're going to finish it out. I got some things I need to talk about before I go, but we're going to turn it loose now, and we're going to continue to talk about the better promises through the law of the Spirit. All glory be to God. And we're going to uh, get into some more things. I got so much information here on this um, law of the Spirit. So if you need um, uh, uh, more uh, study materials on this particular subject, I can uh, forward it to you. Just send me your email address um, and I'll be putting some things on the screen later on this week so you'll be able to contact us via email and we'll be able to uh, send you these materials. But I want to let you know uh, the Lord of Spirit, uh, we have a better promise through the Lord of Spirit. And this is why it's important that everyone that claims to know God and to be born of God must be born of the water and of the spirit. And we're going to talk about it. We're going to get farther in here. We're going to get a little bit deeper. We're going to dig a little bit farther down in here as we talk about uh, the better promises through the law of the spirit. And the law of the spirit was the only thing that God could give to set us free. Praise God. Hmm. It took the spirit to free us. All oh, glory be to God, because our spirit bear witness with his spirit that we are the sons of God. Hmm? And this is why if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he or she is not his. It's important. I don't care what church you in, what ministry you in, who you under, you need the Holy Ghost. Hmm? Don't let nobody tell you you don't need the Holy Ghost. You need the Holy Ghost before you leave this world. Hmm? You need the Holy Ghost. All oh, glory be to God. Hmm? You need the Holy Ghost. All oh, glory be to God. Just like you need that water baptism, you need the Holy Ghost. You need to be baptized. All oh, glory be to God. With water and that with fire. You need you need to be baptized. All oh, glory be to God. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it for you. I got to go, but I, I got to get Matthew chapter 3 and 11. Let me get it for you. I'm going to read it for you. You need this. We got people now, they just want you to come to their church and, and, and sit there 
dead like Adam was. All glory be to God after he sinned against God. I don't want you sitting up in the church dead. I'm trying to speak life to you. Hmm? I'm trying to give you life. And this is how you get it. He said, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance. For he that cometh after me is mightier than I. He says, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. And he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Oh, glory. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you can see I'm getting stirred up today. Praise God. Hmm? He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And with fire. Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. You got people now say they got the Holy Ghost. And oh, glory. They don't even move. Hmm? But I tell you something. I put a match on you. I hit you with a piece of fire. You or uh, you get electrocuted. You're going to move. That fire hits you. Hmm? Oh, glory be to God. You're going to move when the spirit hits you. Hmm? We want to sit up in these churches. Oh, glory be to God. Dead, huh? Oh, glory be to God. Hmm? But God come to give us life. And you need the Holy Ghost and that with fire, whose fire is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garnel. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. And that mean if you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you just chaff. <laughs> oh, glory. Let me get out of here. huh? If you ain't got the Holy Ghost, you just chaff sitting up in God's house. And you're going to burn up. Oh, let me get out of here. I got to go. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> but I want to encourage you. You ain't got to burn up hmm? when there's a better promise for you. Glory. And I won't let you know it's through the law of the spirit. Hmm? You need the Holy Ghost. You need to get it. Hmm? I'm going to let you go now. But this is your host, Elder Gregory Newsom with the Faith in God and that TV. Uh, we love you with the love of the Lord. Uh, please come back and join us back on Wednesday. And, uh, we will go a little bit farther as we talk about the better promises through the law of the spirit. All right. And so again, with no further ado, uh, this is your host, Elder Gregory Newsom, uh, with the faith in God internet TV until next time, God bless you in Jesus name. Praise God.